it's the final Grand Prix of the year. The 2014 UIM ABP Aquabike Class Pro World Championship season comes to a climax at the Grand Prix of China as the world title in four categories will be decided on the mighty Liu River in Liu Zhu. Liu Zhu has become a regular fixture on the Aquabike World Tour. This bustling city of nearly four million people in the heart of Guangxi province has been a standard fixture of the Aquabike Tour for years. Yuzhu is well-rooted in its illustrious and ancient traditions, with a history dating back more than two millennia. The city boasts ornate temples, not to mention lush greenery filled with verdant parks and tree-lined avenues, in a city surrounded by a lush and picturesque landscape dotted with majestic limestone karsts, through which the Liu River winds. This is a young and happening city with a modern, dynamic and outward-looking population that is quickly integrating with the rest of the world. The city center is a festival of light, sound, color and flavors. It's fun, it's hip, it's energetic and it's on the way up. The nightlife is fantastic and the nightclubs are wild, sexy and go all night. The previous round on the 2014 tour was in world famous Ibiza, Spain. Ibiza is renowned as the world capital of partying and electronic music. Ibiza and Aquabike proved a perfect match as the beach is filled with revelers and spectators who flocked in their thousands to see the action unfold. Ibiza was round three on the 2014 tour where 65 racers from 15 countries raced on the choppy waters off one of the most famous beaches in the world, the Playa de Mbosa. In the runabout GP1, Teddy Pons put in a great couple of races to get a clean sweep in Ibiza. In the Ski Division GP1, Chris McCluggage put in a brilliant performance to win both heats and take the fight to world standings leader Jeremy Perret. In the ladies, the surprise win went to Sandra Fernandez of Spain, while in the freestyle, Rock Florianchich once again reigned supreme. Yuzhu is the perfect setting for the finale of the 2014 season. There are 56 riders from all over the world. In the runabout GP1 and the Ski Ladies GP1, we'll see a brand new world champion, while the Ski Division GP1 will see a nail-biting battle unfold between the top contenders. There's everything to race for here, it's now or never. There would once again be a strong Chinese contingent suiting up to do battle with the best in the world, with 12 riders competing in all categories. In the Ski Division GP1, it's the long-awaited climax to an incredible season-long battle 
between arguably the world's two most talented professional ski division racers, Jeremy Pore of France and Chris McCluggage of the USA. Jeremy Pore stormed to a great start this season, winning the first three heats of the year, and he takes his world standings lead into China, where he hopes to get his third world championship title. But the momentum is with Chris McCluggage, who has won the last three races of the season, coming to China on a mean winning streak. But the breakdown in Heat 2 of Qatar may come to haunt him, as he has to win both heats while hoping Jeremy Pore somehow falters. We're just looking for a uh, you know, top qualifying position and uh, put our heads down and work really hard tomorrow and uh, hopefully come out on top. You know, we can only do so much. Uh, second place gives us, uh, if he gets second in both races, we're still six points behind in the championship, but uh, at least we can uh, walk away with winning the battle. You know, maybe not the war, but anything can happen. Tiago Sousa, who's third in the world standings, would not make it to China, giving Alberto Monti a chance to possibly take a third place podium in the 2014 world title. In the ladies, Jennifer Menard leads the world standings, dominating with four wins from six races this year. The only rider who can challenge Menard for the world title is Estelle Pere. She won her first ever race in Milan, proving she's maturing as a rider, but she has to close a 19-point deficit if she's to challenge Menard for the world title. Ski Division GP1, Heat 1. The riders line up for the start. The yellow flag goes up, and they're away. Great start from Chris McCluggage in pole position as he crouches down into his characteristic start-sprint posture, trying to get the jump on Jeremy Pere. Behind McCluggage and Pere, Nacho Armillas leads ahead of Alberto Monti, followed by Alex Pere. Chris McCluggage is first to the whole shot, Pere right beside him, followed by Armillas and Pere, who gets ahead of Monti. McCluggage leads to the second start boy and keeps Pere at bay. The Frenchman trying to match McCluggage's blistering pace with the water still smooth enough for top speeds. McCluggage enters the parallel course opting for the blue track. Jeremy Pere opting for the green track as they emerge from the alternate course and come around toward the demarcation boy. Pere in fourth ahead of Monty, giving chase to Armias. Up in the lead, Chris McClugage, looking to build on his three-race winning streak with another win here in Liu Zhu. Crucial if he's to have a shot at nabbing the world title from Pere. Young Nacho Armias right behind them in third, looking to get back to his winning ways following that terrible accident in China last year. In sixth, behind Pere and Monti is a surprise name, Steven Lopez, followed by Tomas Kete of Croatia in seventh, and then the ladies' leader, Jennifer Menard. Alexander Barre has a fall, almost relinquishing his lead to Alberto Monti, but he gets back up and stays in fourth. But Monti's right on his tail. McCluggage in the lead, looking as fast as ever, while Jeremy Pore tries to keep up, knowing he just needs a second and third place result in two heats to secure the world title. Behind Armias, Alex Barre takes the black penalty boy after missing a turn, and that's the chance Alberto Monti needed to move into fourth. In the ladies, Jennifer Menard has a great start, leading ahead of Estelle Pore. Behind her is Steven Loidis and former world number three, Slavin Ivancic. Alberto Monti has a fall in the choppy waters in lap two, and Alex Beret will retake fourth. Thank you very much. 
Up in front, Jeremy Pere appears to be cutting down Chris McCluggage's lead, and Pere is just a couple of ski lengths behind the American now. What a comeback from Pere. Sandra Fernandez in third among the ladies, and just behind her is Italian Marta Sorrentino. McCluggage is making mistakes. He may be tiring. The conditions are rough. He submarines, losing crucial seconds, just managing to hold on. This is nail-biting stuff. Pore is not giving up the chase, pouring the pressure on the American, pushing him to the max. In the parallel course, McCluggage in the blue track, Pore in the green. McCluggage holds on as they go past the demarcation sausage boy. One more mistake, and the race he's led from the start could slip through his hands. McCluggage loses his footing. This is uncharacteristic from the American multiple world champion. McCluggage has to go for the penalty boy, and Jeremy Pere does it. He wins the race literally in the last turn. What a cruel blow for McCluggage, but what a victory for Pere. In the ladies, Jennifer Menard makes easy work of it as she comfortably wins her fifth race of the season. Estelle Pere, runner up. To be honest with you, uh, I didn't ride good towards the end of the race. But, uh, both started working a little bit weird in the rough stuff. We do this from the start, but uh, a couple of, uh, you know we're racing against amateurs, a lot of the guys out there. And it's difficult when you come upon them. The, the course marshals try to do the best they can. But I know uh, for sure I was had a decent lead and I got held up behind some lappers and it really screwed me up. And then he got closer and I just need to focus on my race and you know I saw the last lap flag and just unfortunately uh, hit a buoy tight went over it and I knew I had to pick it up or they would uh, they would call me on missing a buoy so yeah it's, it's shit luck but it's racing and, uh, I didn't I see that he'd uh, missed a boy uh, so when I saw him go for the penalty yeah, boy like, uh, I immediately with threw with myself at the chance and when I passed him it was just crazy We've had a great battle all season long, and today was yet another amazing show. I've got treetops under my head. I've got seasons under my bed. The Aquabike World Tour visits some pretty amazing places, and there's more to it than just racing. We took some time off after a hard day's racing and joined up with ski division aces Jennifer Menard and Stephen Loydis as they took in the sights, sounds, and tastes on the streets of downtown Liuzhou. I'm Jennifer Menard. We're here in Liuzhou, China. It's my second time here. The first time was in 2010. It's been a long time since I've been here, and of course, it's very different from Paris. It's crowded and busy day and night, and the people are very interested in us, very observant and warm. It's great to come back to places like this to race and to acquaint people with the sport of aquabike. And it's also great to experience different cities and people. The people are very hospitable, they're very polite and friendly. The food is very different from what I'm used to. Sometimes I love it, sometimes not so much. But it's nice to experience different cuisine. My name is Stephen Loydis. It's my second time here in Liuzhou, China, having first come here in 2009 by invitation from the UIM, like this year as well. This is a very hospitable and welcoming place with a huge population and it really is a whole different world. There's a lot of energy here, people everywhere. There's such an electric street life, big beautiful buildings, a pulsating city center, all truly impressive. I found the Chinese to be very polite and friendly, but communication is a bit of a problem as I don't speak any English and nor do many Chinese. So we communicate through hands and gestures, and somehow it all works. Uh, 
I've been a contracted rider for the past seven years, but this is the first year that I've participated in a complete championship season. The first Grand Prix was in Qatar, where I won, and then the second was in Milan, where I also won. In the third round in Ibiza, I had some bad luck in the first heat, so I was fortunate to make it on the podium at all, since my main rival for the championship also had a breakdown. And now we're here in Liuzhou for the final round of the World Championship. I'm 19 points ahead of my nearest rival in the world standings, and I'm very happy with my first full year. It's really been a great year. I won the French Championship, and hopefully I'll win the World Championship here as well. In the runabout GP1, the title has come down to a battle between two Frenchmen who have shown incredible form all year. 2009 world champion Teddy Pons rules the roost going into China, and he's keen for a second world title. He's won three out of six races this season, and he takes a seven-point cushion over his nearest rival going into Liu Zhu. I'm in a pretty good position as the weekend gets underway, on top of the World Championship standings, and I start Heat 1 in second position. The aim is to keep up with Jeremy Perez, who has pole, and not let him build too much of a lead. I will try to pass him if I can, but there are two races, so if I finish second, I have another race in which to make up for it. So nothing to win, and nothing to lose. Enter Jeremy Perez. He's had his best season in years, following an incredible two-race win in Milan that catapulted him briefly to the top of the world standings. Although he trails Pons by seven points, his performance has been incredible, and he's been working hard to get his ski even faster. We're in China now, and I'm in second position in the overall standings, just behind Teddy Pons. We've been putting in a lot of work on the machine, my mechanics have been working hard, and the ski is running very smoothly. It's a great advantage to have pole position. I'm going to do everything I can to do my best and win this race. Although Mohamed Al Haidus of Qatar has a very slim outside chance of nabbing the world title, he'll realistically be fighting for third place. But he has a bevy of talented riders who could snatch third place from his grasp. Cyril Lemoine, Lars Ackerblom, and Francois Midori. Multiple world champion Cyril Lemoine has had a bad year since winning round one in Qatar, so he'll be hoping to get a consolation third place in China. The big name to look out for is Lars Sebastian Ackerblom. He's been rising up the ranks rapidly, and he goes into China in fourth place, following his third place finish in Ibiza. He'll no doubt be producing another all-out, no-holds-barred performance. Francois Midori has been struggling to find the winning ways that earned him the world title in 2012, but if he can avoid a breakdown, he has a distant shot at third. Now let's take a tour of the race course in Liu Zhu with veteran racer Lorenzo Benaglia of Italy. The riders have a rolling start in three groups as they come through a long straightaway to the first start boy or hole shot. Then they do a 90 degree turn to the second start boy. That's followed by another long straightaway across the top of the course toward the parallel or alternate course. A sharp left brings you into the parallel course where you can pick either the blue track or the green, both of which are the same length. 
This is where riders get the chance to overtake each other. Those from the blue track coming out on the right hand side of the demarcation boy and those from the green track coming out on the left. Failure to take the correct side will result in disqualification. And those then take the riders through the finish line. That's where the start lap ends and the first normal race lap starts. Followed by a sharp left. And then a double white boy right turn. With another left and right following that and then a part of the course only for the runabouts, comprised of long straightaways, where the riders will achieve some high speeds, but where you'll also see tricky conditions considering the river current and the churning race waters. That's followed by a big, long straightaway at the top, where we're likely to see a lot of passing and top speeds. That brings the riders back to the parallel course. The race being 25 minutes for runabouts plus one lap and 15 minutes for ski riders plus one lap. Heat one of runabout gets underway. Jeremy Perez has pole position as he leads the top group of riders to the first start boy. Lars Ackerblom has the pace to push the top three on the turn as the riders come around to the second start boy. Jeremy Perez is comfortably in the lead with Teddy Pons in hot pursuit as the riders enter the parallel course. Perez maintains his lead as he comes around the demarcation boy. Lars Ackerblom comes out the alternate course, but Katari Thamad Al Darwish comes out one step ahead in fourth. At the end of the start lap, Perez leads with Pons chasing, then Al Haidus in third, followed by his fellow Katari Al Darwish, then Ackerblom and Cyril Lemoine in sixth. Behind Lemoine, there's a tussle for seventh between Polish rider Andrzej Wisniewski and Spaniard Jordi Tomas Jimenez with Fracasso and Midori chasing. Back up front, world standings leader Teddy Pons keeps up the chase, but Perez is just too fast out there. It's a perfect start from Jeremy Perez. Ackerblom stays in pursuit of Aldarwish as the waters get choppier. Jeremy Perez has two wins and two runner-up finishes in the last four races, and Pons is having trouble keeping up here, but he knows how important it is to defend his slender points lead in the standings. In fifth position, Lars Ackerblom chased by Lemoine. At the back, Gianluca Santiamantini, Chinese rider Wei Tan, and Lorenzo Benaglia lock horns. Perez in the lead, the race going well so far for him, but then disaster strikes as a busted piston ends his race. That puts Teddy Pons in the lead, and this is a major stroke of fortune for him, but he has to avoid the same fate as Perez if he's to capitalize on this. If Pons were to win here in Heat 1, that would earn him 25 points, which would effectively decide the world title for 2014. With Pons in the lead, Alhaidus moves up to second position. Perez gets going again, trying to take the turn, but it's no good. Lars Sebastian Ackerblom up in fourth, chasing down the two Qatari riders in the top three, Al Haidus and Al Darwish. Pons with a comfortable lead, goes from strength to strength while Jeremy Perez watches on helplessly as the world title all but slips through his fingers. I was comfortably in the lead when I heard a noise in the motor during the race. And then I think the engine just broke and I just stopped. The race isn't over yet and there's still another race this afternoon. We'll see what we can do. There's a 
there's a shake-up at the top behind Teddy Pons and Mohamed al Haidus in lap eight as Akerblom moves up to third and Tamer al Dawish drops to fifth position behind Andre Wisniewski. There's a big battle playing out behind Wisniewski as Al Darwish, Fracasso, Jordi Tomas Jimenez and Midori keep up their chase of the front runners. Lamont in trouble yet again, making it four races out of five that he's been unable to complete. Lamont towed off. That ends his chance for a third place finish to the year. As the race progresses, the waters churn, the waves get bigger, and it starts to become a battle of endurance in which the fittest riders prevail. Teddy Pons is on course for a comfortable win and his second world title, but Al Haidus and Akerblom are close enough to pounce were Pons to make a last minute error. But Pons has the experience, and so far this season, he's also had the crucial mechanical reliability that makes a champion in such a demanding motorsport as this. The white flag is up. The race enters the last lap. This is the last chance for Al Haidus and Ackerblom to go for a win. Al Haidus and Ackerblom go for a final push, but Pons is smooth, consistent, and in no rush, all he has to do is run this race out, take it one boy at a time. And there it is, Teddy Pons is race one winner and the UIM ABP Aqua by Class Pro Champion of 2014. What a way to cap off a magical year for the Frenchman. Al Haidus finishes second, but he was disqualified for missing a turn boy following a post-race protest by Ackerblom, which moved the Swede into runner-up spot, with Andrzej Wisniewski of Poland finishing third. I'm really happy with my weekend in Yuzhu. A big thank you to all my family, all my friends, and my whole team, Odmar. I'm very happy. I won my first Aquabike world title here in Yuzhu almost exactly five years ago. And to do it again after so many years in the same place is truly amazing. Thank you. Excellent parties, Liu Zhu has been one of the most popular stops on the Aquabike Tour. With their amazing atmosphere and shows, the clubs are always packed, and the Aquabikers are always keen to take the party to the next level. When you put a bunch of young, talented athletes together, you don't just get hard racing, you also get some hard partying. style event, Rock Florianchich has proven unbeatable, winning every race he's entered, and another win in Heat 1 of China will seal his second world championship in a row. If anyone can beat him, it's his brother Nas Florianchich. The 2012 world champion has always come second to his brother so far, but can he throw the monkey off his back and give Rock a run for his money this time? Joining the Florianchic Maestros is veteran Italian Roberto Mariani of Rome and also Chinese writer Chao Fan Li, who will be looking to mix it up with the big boys. Roberto Mariani gave a fun display of his skills that earned the man from Rome third place overall at the end of two heats. Ooh. 
Anas Florianchich was once again in fine form with an excellent repertoire of backflips, 360s and trick combos that earned him the runner-up spot yet again with 20 points from both heats. The indisputable king of the hill, Rock Florianchic once again stole the show. He was better than ever in China, producing his usual gravity-defying flourish of incredible tricks, as well as new stuff never seen before that earned him an unprecedented 99 points out of 100 in Heat 2. The world standings at the end of the year, Rock Florianchic defends his world title with a perfect four out of four Grand Prix wins and 200 points. World runner-up is his brother Nas on 160 points, with Roberto Mariani taking third place. It's a successful and a good season behind me. Uh, we had a quite long season from March till October. We started in Qatar. Uh, I was still a bit rusty uh, after the winter, but uh, my shape uh, improved and improved from race to race. And today I achieved uh, 99 points. Uh, in the, I'm very satisfied and happy with the result. And uh, actually, I did uh, almost all my tricks. Uh, the routine was perfect, uh, clean, without any mistakes. And uh, that's it, the season's done. On the tour, Nicola Piscaglia has been racing since 2010. We joined the 25-year-old ski rider in China as he explored the Confucian Temple in Liu Zhu and talked to us about his experiences, career, and observations on the tour. I'm Nicola Piscaglia. We're in China for the last round of the 2014 Aquabike Tour. It's my fifth year on the tour. In my first two years, I just competed in the Italian Championships. Then, from my third year onwards, I've been competing in the UIM ABP Tour. In my fourth year, I came to China for the first time. And this year, I'm back again for the final round. I'd like to thank Aquabike for giving me the chance to race alongside these other 20 riders and also to experience the runabout event where there are another 20 regular riders. I came here with my girlfriend, so we have the chance to race three days and also spend three days sightseeing. In this discipline, there are some top world-class pilots like American Chris McClugage and a lot of very strong European riders. Two years ago, I was able to get a third place in the World Championship and this year I hope to better that. The fact that the level of racing is so high is an incentive for me to improve myself as well. The great thing about racing on the world tour is experiencing different cultures and seeing some beautiful sights like this temple. Outside it's complete chaos with cars and people everywhere. It's even dangerous to cross the road sometimes. But then you enter this temple and experience a sense of peace and tranquility and also beauty with the white marbles and the wood they use as well as the red colors they use for luck and the dragon motifs that have such an important place in their mythology. It's a place they come to pray and find peace and I love experiencing such unique aesthetic structures and cultures. This is it, the last race of the year. This is where the World Championship will be decided. Can McClugage pull a rabbit out of a hat? Will Poray's exceptional technical reliability come through for him once again here where it counts the most? Can Monty do what it takes to take third place in the world standings? And in the ladies, is it Menard or will Estelle Perret cause a sensational last minute upset? It's all about to play out now. The drama is about to unfold.
The race is on. The riders speed their way down the starting straight to the first start boy. McCluggage and Jeremy Perret go head to head as they leave the rest of the field behind them. McCluggage down low with his distinctive start posture gets a slight lead over Perret at the first start boy. But Perret uses his inside pole position advantage well to fend off the American and take a two ski length lead as McCluggage chases him across the long top straightaway to the alternate course. Behind Poré and McCluggage, Nacho Armias is in third position just ahead of Alberto Monti. The riders enter the parallel course. Poré takes the blue track, McCluggage takes the green. This is McCluggage's first chance at passing Poré. The two emerge from the alternate course. McCluggage pushes hard, but Poré maintains his lead. McCluggage is 21 points behind Poré, so he needs to win and hope Poré is somehow unable to get more than three points. Behind them, Monty knows he has to beat Armias and at least finish third to get on the podium in the World Championship standings ahead of the absent Thiago Sousa. In fifth position, Alexander Barre, who's had a consistent year, putting points on the board in all but one heat. Meanwhile, number 89, Jennifer Menard in 10th position overall and leading the ladies' field ahead of Spaniard Sandra Fernandez with Estelle Perre third. Back to the front runners, McCluggage continues his chase of Perre, but Perre is not the kind of rider who makes mistakes or loses concentration. The conditions get choppier and the front runners will have to weave through the back markers. Further back, Hungarian Josef Bohuslav and Croatian Tomas Kete fight it out for seventh position. Bohuslav nudging ahead as Kete, who's fifth in the world standings, tries to find a space to pass. But Bohuslav fends Kete off well. Up in the lead, Jeremy Pere still being chased by McCluggage, who knows he just needs to finish the race, but he's racing to win as usual. Meanwhile, Lloyd Dies passes both Piscaglia and Thomas Gete, and he then sets his sights on Josef Bohuslav. A small tumble sets back his plans, but he recovers and continues the chase. Behind Attila Futo of Hungary is Chinese writer Li Qianqian in the ladies, followed by male Chinese writers Liu He and Wang Xiaowei. The 15 minutes is up, the race goes into the last lap. Chris McCluggage is racing this out to the end, hoping for a miracle, but he seems to be tiring out there in these grueling water conditions. Jennifer Menard, meanwhile, looks well on her way to comfortably securing the world title as Estelle Poré trails back in third behind Sandra Fernandez. The final slalom through the parallel course Jeremy Poré is looking comfortable. He knows all he has to do now is just get to the finish line. There it is. Jeremy Poré wins his third world championship title. Chris McCluggage is world runner-up. A great win for Jeremy Poré. Armias finishes third, which gets him on the podium for the weekend. Great result for the Spaniard following his injury last year. And in the ladies, Jennifer Menard has it. She wins her first world championship title. Estelle Pere comes in third in the ladies and ends the year second overall. Menard and Pere give a victory tour. The season is finally over and I'm very happy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to win all the races this year. The only one I didn't manage to win was Ibiza. But I'm very happy. I thank my parents and family, my mechanic, who was great and carried me all season, and everyone who supported me. In the overall standings, Menard is the champ, Estelle Poré runner-up, and Marta Sorrentino, third. In the men, the top three, Jeremy Poré, Chris McClugage, 
Nacho Armias. Monty finishes fourth ahead of Alexander Bure and Steven Loidis, with Tomas Kete coming in seventh. That fourth place finish means Monty is just two points short of supplanting Thiago Sousa for third place in the overall year-end standings, while Tomas Kete ends the year in fifth. It was a great season, but also a very difficult season, especially considering the battle with Chris McClugage, and we fought it out until the last race. I won in Qatar, then he got the better of me in Milan and Ibiza, and then here I was able to win the final showdown to take the Grand Prix and the world title. I'm very happy with this title because it was fought out at a very high level of racing. Team Race Spirit boasts a formidable outfit with some of the world's best runabout and ski talent, including the likes of Jeremy Perret and David Chassier. We talked to Chassier about this team that sets new standards of professionalism in the sport. There are two racers in Team Race Spirit today. We formed the team seven years ago competing in endurance and UIM races at first, and we didn't compete in ski at the start. But later, Jeremy Perret joined the team about four years ago, and we know the great results he's been getting. We've had some good results over the years, and we're proud of our spirit of camaraderie and professionalism. I'm originally more specialized as an endurance racer, but I've been racing more slalom courses through the years, racing alongside some great riders here. Tomorrow, we hope to continue our campaign and put in some good racing. What characterizes the UIM Tour is a high level of professionalism, and they put on races that are worthy of the UIM title. I hope and expect that the sport will receive more coverage from the media and go out to more and more channels and viewers worldwide. There are a whole bunch of great teams with talented riders out there, so the competition is tough, and we all put everything on the line during the race. But there's also a lot of respect and sportsmanship that characterizes this sport. And when the racing's over, we're all friends. Which is the important thing really in this sport, to respect what we do and help each other achieve our goals together. We gotta fly on the wall. Runabout Heat 2. Teddy Pons is the world champion for the year, regardless of Heat 2 results, and that's a big blow to Jeremy Perez's hopes. The battle is on for third, however, with Ackerblom the favorite following Al Haidus's disqualification in race one, although the Qatari is still in the running, as is Francois Midori, while Cyril Lemoine has closed out the season, unable to race in Heat 2. Riders line up for the rolling start. Al Haidus and Perez starting from the back, and they're off. Great start from Teddy Pons and Pole, but look at Lars Ackerblom close the gap with Wisniewski right beside him. Then Fracasso as the riders get to the first start boy. And Ackerblom has the lead. Look at him go. Teddy Pons bumped down to second position as they're about to enter the circuit in the alternate course. Lars Ackerblom is flying out there. The F1 H2O drivers also look on as Lars Ackerblom enters the parallel course in the blue track with Pons hot on his tail. Ackerblom's runner-up finish in Heat 1 moved him up to third overall, and another such result here will guarantee him a year-end podium. As for Pons, he's just enjoying a no-pressure race, knowing that he has the world title under his belt but surely he'll be relishing a battle against a competitor like Ackerblom. The riders complete the start lap. Ackerblom, Pons, then Wisniewski in third, followed by Francois Midori in fourth, 
who bumped Mattia Fracasso down to fifth. Still in with a distant shot at a third place year-end finish, Alhaidus knows he has to race hard and move up the field to make up for yesterday's crucial mistake. Ackerblom enters the parallel course again in the blue track, but Teddy Pons is right behind him. And he's certainly not racing like he's just taking it easy. He's racing like he wants to win this heat and the Grand Prix. A third place finish for Wisniewski will also see the hard racing pole on the podium in China. Behind Wisniewski is Midori, Fracasso, and number 20, Thamat Al Darwish of Qatar, followed by strong performances from Hervé Partouche and Didier Chabert, followed by yet another Swedish rider, Johan Johansson. Gianluca Santiamantini tries to fend off the two back starters, Jeremy Perez and Mohamed Al Haidus. Further back, Chinese rider Wu Ronghua chases Frenchman David Chassier. Jeremy Perez is racing with Lorenzo Benaglia's ski, but with his world runner-up for 2014 guaranteed, Perez's race is little more than a formality. Although he ended up with zero points in Heat 1, Alhaidus still puts on a brave and business-as-usual performance. Further back, David Chassier stays ahead of Wu Ronghua and Jean-Marc Duki. Wisniewski had to take the black penalty boy and that nearly cost him third place as Midori catches up with a pole, but Wisniewski holds on by the skin of his teeth. Wisniewski's Polish fans are excited and there you can see the thousands that have turned up to watch the final race of the year. In seventh position is the ever-consistent Hervé Partouche. Another points finish here will mean he's the only runabout rider to get points in every race this season. This time Midori punishes Wisniewski's mistake, passing the Polish rider and moving into third position behind his friend Teddy Pons. Problems for Teddy Pons! Pons is towed off the course. Poor Jeremy Perez must be thinking about what could have been. With Pons out, the pressure is off Ackerblom, who has a comfortable lead over Francois Midori. But he has to keep one eye on Wisniewski in third, who in turn has to keep tabs on Fracasso in fourth. Always a danger when his ski's running well. Meanwhile, further back, all Al Haidus can do is keep racing hard and keep hoping for an Ackerblom breakdown. But with a clock ticking down, it looks less and less likely. The final stretch now, and Ackerblom is unassailable. We have a brand new China Grand Prix champion, Lars Ackerblom. It feels like it's going to be the first of many. And a great result for Midori, his best finish of the season, which bodes well for next year. But it's the Poles who are the happiest, cheering their man on as Wisniewski takes third, holding off Fracasso for a podium spot. Great result for Wisniewski. Ackerblom parades with a checkered flag. He earned it. The runabout Grand Prix results, Ackerblom reigns with Wisniewski runner-up and Midori third ahead of Mattia Fracasso and Teddy Pons. Didn't know what, what to expect when I first uh, drove in Qatar, but I did good there. But then I just uh, trying to improve all the time to make smarter and better decisions while I was racing and uh, also train more to handle the ski the best in the rough waves. My goal here was to get third place in the championship. That was my goal. And um, of course, I'm always aiming for the first place. But this was the first time also in the UM. So this was luck, but also uh, good planning from uh, me and, and my team. Pons and Perez fought all season, but in the end, Pons proved the victor. The 
overall world standings at the end of 2014. Teddy Pons, world champion. Jeremy Perez, runner-up. Lars Ackerblom, third, following his China Grand Prix win. A great season for me that resulted in the UIM ADP Aquabike World Championship for me. It's been a rather good season throughout, with a second place in Qatar, followed by third place in Italy, despite that problem in Heat 1. So a podium is rather good. And then of course Ibiza, where I rose to the top of the World Championship standings, and I was able to hold on to that here in Liuzhou for the final. That's it for yet another year. Join us in 2015 for another action-packed season as the UIM AVP Aquabike Class Pro World Championship comes back bigger, stronger and better than ever.